What's up, muscle fiends? Today we're talking about body dysmorphia, specifically with regards to leanness. And to make things interesting, I thought I would compare the content of one Mr. Greg Doucette and one Mr. Jeff Cavalier, just to spice things up. Body dysmorphia is loosely defined as worrying about minor flaws in your appearance that might not even be noticeable to other people. And I would say it's extremely common, especially in the fitness industry. If you consume social media content on a regular basis, there's a pretty good chance that you have body dysmorphia. But let's look at Greg Doucette's content and Athlean X's content and see if they are promoting an unrealistic, unattainable, and unsustainable body image. So Jeff Cavalier's first video that comes up is 5.3% body fat, the thumbnail, it's him, you know, standing there, shredded, blah, blah, blah. How to get this lean year round. That alone is extremely disingenuous. No one is 5.3% body fat year round. No one, not a single person on this goddamn planet is 5.3% body fat year round. And certainly not naturally and certainly not for the average person another one how to get that shredded look fast really shredded you're gonna get shredded fast no that is over promising which is what it usually does five things every ripped guy does copy these uh take steroids restrict their diet heavily be super active you know have an eating disorder that kind of thing no, okay, this is just completely ridiculous. Just because you copy some strategies, which you probably shouldn't even do in the first place, does not mean you're going to get the results of some juiced up steroid influencer bodybuilder guy. The next one is probably one of the worst ones. How to get this shredded, parentheses, just do this. Now, this guy is known as one of the leanest people in human history. And this would have been an absolutely perfect opportunity for Jeff Cavalier to talk about the negative impacts of staying too lean, something that he never ever seems to talk about. Why? Because he is selling leanness. He is Athlean X. Leanness is his entire brand. And therefore, he never ever talks about the negative impacts of staying too lean, of which there are many. And so, for him to post this and not actually talk about the negative effects, only say, oh, this guy needs to be more restrictive. Well, yeah, he has to be more restrictive, but there's a whole shitload of other effects as well, which I'll go into later. Next one, how to get six pack abs while building muscle size. Yeah, for the average person, especially a natural, not gonna happen. You're not gonna gain huge amounts of size while getting a six pack. You cannot ride two horses at once once because because you're one person and the horses you get the idea how to get ripped and stay ripped 365 days a year right doesn't anyone notice this i feel like i'm taking crazy pills get a six pack in 22 days 22 days you get a six pack what a fucktard all right now let's do the same thing with greg Doucette's page just searching the word lean the first result how lean can you get Clients that grind my gears, body fat expectations versus reality. It is not easy to maintain 8 to 10% body fat year round. It is not. That's what I'm talking about, okay? Actually talk about balance. The negative effects of meaning too lean of a physique, okay? Not just always getting lower, 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 lower like Athlean X is suggesting in every single goddamn video. Next one, Anthony Mantello, too lean. The words too lean have never come out of Jeff Cavalier's mouth because leaner is always better, right? Like you're always a better athlete when you're leaner. No. Next one, when dieting harder than last time goes too far. Again, the same thing, talking about that balance where getting too lean is not a good thing. The next one, Glenn Gillen, the ugly truth to being shredded. My review plus five Coach Greg tips. So again, in this video, he's saying that getting too lean is not a good thing, especially if you have no plans on competing. Everyone thinks that being shredded is the key to happiness, that you're gonna be just like happy once you get there, that it's the like the be all end all. I wanna be shredded, I wanna look amazing, and then yeah, I can get there, and then it's gonna be a happy life. 
The truth is, it is not at all the solution. And in fact, it makes it worse. Trying to get shredded, it's gonna make your life more miserable. Not better, worse. So you're fighting to get shredded, thinking it's gonna be awesome, I can't wait to look amazing. And you're fighting for something that's going to make your life worse, worse, not better, worse, worse. The key message is worse. Now, does Greg promote body dysmorphia? Perhaps a little bit, just because he has a million followers, 1.1 million, and he is a lean guy. He is under 10% body fat year round, and some people might want to emulate him. Plus, he does have some content that says like, my diet to maintain a shredded physique year round, you know, how to get ripped year round. But he also promotes that balanced approach that Athlean X does not at all. You know, the only negative of things that he said from being lean is like, you have to be more disciplined, but there's a lot more to it than that. So there are a lot of negative effects from maintaining too lean of a physique. And I wanted to take this opportunity to go through all of them, or at least most of them. First, disordered and restrictive eating. It is much, much more common at under 10% body fat compared to sort of 12 to 18, up to 20, maybe low 20s that I normally recommend. There's nothing wrong with being 20% body fat. If you have to really be super restrictive and count everything and measure everything and have like only fake artificial foods and, you know, have always protein prioritized and always fiber prioritized and, sh you know, checking everything and only eating carrot cake twice a year, that kind of thing. Maybe you're just trying to maintain too lean of a physique. Next, strength. Especially if you are natural, you will be weaker at 6 to 7% body fat compared to 16 to 17% body fat. I guarantee you that, and especially if you are natural. Okay, most guys who are 6 to 7% body fat, they're not as strong as they look. In fact, a lot of them have to use fake plates. I'll finally be able to call myself a strength coach. Next, athletic performance. Athlean X does this all the time. He conflates leanness with improvements in performance. That is not the case, okay? Some sports, yes, being leaner is generally better, but once you get to a certain level of leanness, getting leaner might actually make you worse. Sure, you look at most Olympic level sprinters, a lot of them are pretty damn lean. But in other sports, leanness might actually be detrimental. And in other sports, having some bulk, having some mass, even if it's fat, can be helpful. You know, sumo wrestlers, they have a high body fat percentage for a reason. Next, hunger and appetite. Now, I'm fairly lean right now, not like super diced or shredded or anything, but I find that if I go below a certain body fat percentage or a certain body weight, my hunger and appetite both go up dramatically. So I'll get hungry in the morning, whereas if I'm bulked up like 15, 20% body fat, I won't get hungry in the morning ever. And also my appetite will go up significantly. I will eat much more quickly, okay? If I'm eight, 9% body fat, the food is gone instantly, okay? My wife will like cook me something, and I'll eat it in like two minutes, literally two minutes, and it'll be gone. And if you find that you have to be incredibly restrictive and disciplined and regimented, and you can't have the foods that you really want to eat, and you are thinking about food all the time, and you have to be very structured in your approach, and you have to add fiber and artificial sweeteners and flavorings and keep your protein super high and make sure everything is on point, and that is not good. That's probably a sign that you're too lean, especially if you're really lean. And sure, maybe Jeff Cavalier can suffer through this 6 to 7% body fat year-round existence, but he's paid handsomely to do that. It's his thing. And to a certain extent, he sort of trapped himself into that existence. Okay? In a lot of ways, I'm sure his life is hell. He just can't show it because he is selling this concept of leanness. Same thing with a lot of these celebrity transformations. You think they really enjoyed the process of getting absolutely peeled? <laughs> no. Next, libido. Sure, you have abs at the beach, you get a lot of attention, you can't really do anything about that attention. Congratulations, you played yourself. Similarly, hormones in general tend to just get really, really weird when you get peeled, okay? So testosterone, 
again, if you're natural, is going to go down. And this is part of the reason why a lot of like professional natural bodybuilders, they're on TRT because they continually have to diet down so low that they're tanking their testosterone levels every single time. So if you're true natural and you don't want to go down that road, perhaps you shouldn't get absolutely ripped and shredded and peeled every single summer. You can get fairly lean, but six to 7% body fat is not a good goal. Also your mood, it will absolutely impact your state of mind and how you react to some circumstances. Do do it. Sign on for Just do do it. Sign on for don't let your dreams be dreams. Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do, do it. Sign on for Bro, don't fucking play games. I will fucking go outside. Do it to the sign on for So if I'm like mid teens or low twenties in body fat percentage, I'm a really chill guy. As I go to 10% and perhaps even below, small stuff pisses me off way more than it otherwise would. So if someone, you know, steals the bench or steals a plate or, you know, messes with me in the gym, even if they didn't mean it, that will cause much more of a reaction than it otherwise would. It will also impact muscle growth and not in a good way. One thing that genuinely pissed me the fuck off was in this video when Jeff Cavalier actually implied that gaining muscle is easier if you maintain a very lean physique. You're actually giving yourself an advantage hormonally because when you walk around in a body that maximizes lean body mass and minimizes stored body fat, you've created a hormonal environment that is much different than the body, even though, let's say even the same weight, the body that has an excessive amount of body fat and very low levels of lean body mass. And you're able to accumulate year over year over year over year of the benefits that that hormonal environment provides you and the opportunities it creates to add more mass and, and, and lean muscle to your frame. Which is not the case at all. And, and, and Bullshit. I've also seen some people who followed Greg Doucette's main gaining advice and tried to main gain or gain tain or whatever at too lean of a body fat percentage. If you are under 10% body fat as a natural, it's going to be much more difficult to actually gain muscle and to make progress. You can gain tain or main gain or whatever at mid teens or even maybe low teens, but trying to do it when you are absolutely ripped and shredded as Jeff Cavalier is, it's just not going to happen. And if you look at most natural YouTube fitnessers, most of them don't maintain a shredded, super ripped physique year round, especially the natural ones. So Jeff Nippard, he doesn't maintain shredded physique year round. Okay, he's probably low teens to mid teens. And occasionally he goes up even higher when he's doing the bear mode mode. Jeremy Etier also doesn't maintain a shredded physique year round. He's probably again, low teens, maybe 11% most of the time. Scott Herman Fitness, he doesn't maintain a shredded physique year round either. Okay, again, low teens is where it's at. Christian Guzman, he's gotten absolutely peeled out of his sauce tree before. Actually, I don't think he was actually saucing it up. Christian Guzman, he's gotten really, really peeled before, but most of the time, he's not that lean. He's not 10% or under year round. It looks more like mid teens or so. Alan Thrall, He's been fairly high in body fat percentage when he's doing the strongman powerlifter kind of thing. Recently, he's gotten a lot leaner, but he's not peeled. He's not 6 7% body fat. He's not even 8 or 9% body fat. Again, he's probably somewhere around 12 to 13% or so. Vitruvian physique. He's also competed, so he's been very, very lean in the past, but most of the time, he's like mid-teens, maybe even high teens at times, and there's nothing wrong with that. He's actually gotten comments saying like, you know, why you have a belly or like you're looking pretty husky or thick or chunky. Nothing wrong with being high teens or even close to 20% in body fat. If you look at Alpha Destiny, he's been fairly lean in the past, but he was probably close to 20% body fat when he bench pressed 405. Nothing wrong with 20% body fat, especially if you have a good amount of muscle as he definitely does, you will look incredible at 20% body fat, especially when you're wearing clothes as most people do most of the time. Mike Matthews, Sean Nalawani, they maintain low teens to maybe closer to 11 to 12% most of the time, but they're not under 10% the vast majority of the time. And if you look at like the silver age bodybuilders from the 1930s, 40s into the 50s, 
Again, it looks like most of the time they are low teens. Occasionally, sometimes going down to maybe eight to nine percent body fat, but they're not maintaining six to seven percent body fat year round because their body tells them to go eat a hamburger. Finally, Mario Tomek, he probably maintains the leanest physique of anyone I just mentioned, but again, he's not six to seven percent body fat or even eight to nine percent body fat. He's sort of hovering around that 10 to 11 percent range. And keep in mind that all of these guys, to a certain extent, are making money based on their appearance. Their social media, their businesses are somewhat reliant on how they look. And even they are not maintaining a super shredded physique year round. So why should you? I get clients all the time, even who are like 25, 30, 40, 45 percent body fat, who write a goal of five to 9% body fat, which I have to tell them, I have to say, dude, that's not gonna happen. I can't get on board with that. And I've actually refused clients who were like, bro, I gotta be seven to 8% body fat. No, you don't. You really, really don't. Other problems, you get, you get cold. That cold huh? You get cold more easily. You get gaunt in the face. Now, being fairly lean is actually good. You get a little bit of, you know, cheekbone definition, jawline, etc. Well, not me, but for other people. I mean, if you're so lean that you have a vein in your goddamn cheek, something is a little bit wrong. What are you talking about, bro? Women love cheek veins. Actually, in reality, women don't care as much about abs or leanness in general as young men think they do. Most of the attention that you're gonna get is gonna be from other dudes. Ooh, nice biceps vein, bro. Wow, your quads are looking really striated. Boom, glutes are looking tight, bro. Plus, especially if you're natural, you're gonna look distinctly do you even lift if you're just in clothes at a normal like social event and not at the beach. In the correct lighting, pump, angles, etc. on social media, yeah, you'll look fucking gargantuan. But in real life, you will look small. Have less energy when you're leaner. You'll get tired for like no reason. It'll impact your sleep, sometimes significantly for some people. Also, it'll impact your social life, okay? So you can't really go out and eat at restaurants because the food is too unhealthy or too high in calories or you don't know what is in the food. And of course, you have to count your calories in order to stay that lean, right? So those are all the negatives of maintaining too lean of a physique. What are the positives? They look cool. Yeah, that's about all. I can't really think of any other reason to get that lean. And if you're gonna try and get shredded, peeled, sliced and diced after watching this video, fair enough. But you've been warned. And there's nothing wrong with not being shredded or not having abs. Being 12%, 15%, 18%, 20%, 22%. Those are all absolutely viable and healthy choices for a man. Women, by the way, sort of a late addition, can add roughly 9 to 10% to these numbers to get an appropriate level for you. On the other hand, you have the opposite problem, the healthy at any body weight, fat acceptance movement, the only movement without movement, but that is a topic for a different video. All right, that's all for this video. Like, subscribe, slap around that notification bell, all that good stuff, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.